Welcome to On The Bend. I am Dave Knapp, Dan Jarl. That's why I'm here. You are on the pen. That's why you're here. We go via your Zempix, Accenda, Victoza, to listen to Manjaro, Zepbound, that pen. And I'm so glad that you're here. Today is a little bit of a personal update, and we're going to get into one of the nerd topics. Uh, so this one's for the nerds. But if you're here for the update on myself, I wanted to give you an all, all an update on my own personal journey. You know, I've been committed to doing that a little bit more on this channel, uh, kind of in the vein of the way that this whole thing started, right, friends? Uh, started with a guy sharing his journey about type 2 diabetes and this discovery of this amazing medication, Manjaro, and subsequently understanding uh, the whole class of medications and what they can do for people. And then, of course, we've got these amazing indications for obesity. So I wanted to jump on here and I wanted to share a little bit more about my journey. So this week I'm down another pound, which is really awesome news because I had to go back to the 10 milligram dose this month. And so I was a little concerned that uh, there would be some slippage. You know, I lost five pounds in that first week uh, back on Manjaro down to 295 this week down to 294 and I'm thankful I'm thankful even though it's a pound and even though it's taken a couple of weeks I'm just thrilled to be seeing the scale move in the correct direction especially given the issues with supply and having to go back to the 10 milligrams I actually stopped taking the low dose naltrexone and I want to give you a little bit of introspective into why so I started having some heart palpitations which normally I don't I don't ever have, unless I'm eating keto, a lot of times I'll get that, uh, but I haven't been eating that way. And so I thought, you know, the only thing I could isolate it to was the LDN. And so I took that out of the rotation and it went away. So, uh, haven't been, haven't been doing that. Uh, but just definitely the Manjaro 10 milligrams. Uh, I've been not spacing the dosage quite as far apart as seven days. I've been taking it about every five to six days uh, because I'm supposed to be on the 12 milligram dose. That kind of helps to keep the level of medication in my blood a little bit more consistent, maybe with what it would be uh, if I had access to the 12.5 milligram. I'm hoping beyond hope that I get access to uh, either the 12.5 or the 15 milligram uh, sometime this week. So we'll see. Uh, of course, you know, consult with your doctor before you do anything like this and go outside of any sort of protocols. Uh, Eli Lilly does say on the directions of their box of Manjaro that if you are going to change uh, the shot day uh, that you're normally uh, going to inject on, make sure it's been at least 72 hours. So that would be the manufacturer's recommendation. So that's my update. I'm thrilled about it. Uh, blood sugars are doing good. Uh, medicine's doing what it's supposed to be doing. I'm just happy to be back on Manjaro. So let's get into what I came on to talk about today for the nerds. Welcome. If you are one of the nerds, this is going to be about the Catalent merger. And I, I have a blog post on the website that I'd love you to check out links in the description. I'm going to be doing more news articles. So if you like to consume your content that way, uh, of course, I'll continue to do videos, continue to do the podcast, continue to do all the things, but I just want to find more ways to get the information out. And you know, here at On The Pen, you boy, don't stop hustling. Uh, to be the first, the first uh, with the information, the first with the hot takes, uh, and the first with the commentary on all of these things that affect any one of us who are on these medications. So this Catalent merger. So Catalent, uh, to recap, is a a generics manufacturer that is responsible for working with a host of pharmaceutical companies around the world to help them produce their active pharmaceutical ingredients of their medication. And in the case of injectables, uh, they're very good at finishing and filling. So they get the empty pens and fill it with the active pharmaceutical ingredient, package it, box it up, send it out, all those good things. So they have a high competency level when it comes to that. So many, many pharmaceutical companies uh, work with Catalent on this uh, this type of, uh, arrangement where they're helping to either manufacture the API or finish and fill their medication. So a couple of months ago, you heard it here first. Of course you did, because that's why you follow me that Catalent was merging with Novo Nordisk. So a $16 billion deal where Novo Nordisk and, and Catalent will basically become one. Novo Nordisk will take over three of these, uh, manufacturing plants 
and this would increase capacity for Novo Nordisk in a major way when it comes to uh, manufacturing Ozempic and Wagovi, which if you're on either of these medications, you know that they have been in a very short supply over the last couple of years. Very hard to find. Seems like the tide has kind of turned and now they're a little bit easier to find and Zepbound and Manjaro are a lot harder to find. So there's this arms race right within these two companies to just expand manufacturing. And you see Eli Lilly sort of learned from the mistakes, sort of the forecasting sins of Novo Nordisk, seeing that they have been woefully unable to meet demand of their medication. And they immediately started launching plants, which are coming online even now. I think about the one in North Carolina that's coming online line by line. They're bringing it on instead of waiting for the whole facility to come back on. So they're increasing capacity. Unfortunately, they just can't increase it enough to keep up with the demand. 100,000 prescriptions new a week. That's a burden uh, of about 1.6 million new pens that they have to manufacture every month on top of what they're already making. It's nearly impossible uh, for them to keep up with. So Catalent is basically Novo Nordisk's answer for uh, you know the forecasting miscalculations they did on the demand for Wigobi and Zempic, but also looking forward into the future, they have got Cagrasema, which will likely be on the market uh, in the next 18 months. That will be ex absolutely amazing. That will rival not only Terzepatide, but it'll actually rival uh, Retitrutide to an extent. Retitrutide obviously not being on the market uh, for the next couple of years, but uh, it will certainly lay the groundwork uh, for some strong competition to Terzepatide, as well as the high-dose versions of Wagobi that we, we will see in the near future. So just a huge merger. So what you have to understand and what I think the, the least uh, spoken about topic, and, and kudos to Sue the Dude for pointing this out the other day, uh, and I 100% agree, is that there are rip, ripple implications throughout all of pharmace this pharmaceutical industry. So you don't just have to be on a GLP-1 for this merger to matter. Because they work with so many manufacturers, and there are many drugs that are in shortage, uh, many of which Catalent has a hand in. So you think of Catalent now working with a whole bunch of Novo Nordisk's competitors. Now all of a sudden these competitors look at, at this merger and they go, okay, so, so you're telling me that our number one vendor that we work with to manufacture our, our, our proprietary uh, you know, recipe for this medication X, Y, or Z, or finish and fill to, to meet demand, all of a sudden they're in the hands of a competitor? Like, so, so a good analogy would be like, if you're a chef and you have a secret recipe to a secret sauce and you just share it with a chef across the street, it's just a little too close to comfort. So I think that this is a, a, a merger that has potential major Im implications. We heard this week, you heard it on uh, the weekly dose podcast where I cover uh, some of the articles that I find most uh, important to share with you throughout the week. If you haven't checked out the podcast, make sure you do links in the description of this video, just a 15 minute bite size, get your news for the week in encrypted memetics and check back in a week later. Uh, so anyways, the Catalan merger uh, basically got new life breathed into it this week as Novo Nordisk refiled paperwork with uh, the proper authorities in the United States to to basically extend the timeline uh, that the that the um, regulators have to to look over the materials and to approve this merger. They were hoping that this would be this is their last earnings call. They were hoping that this deal would sort of be done by the end of the year. But I think there's going to be a lot of pushback. And I think it will be very unlikely that this happens in 2024, if it happens at all. And it may, but this is going to be a different one, a difficult one to get past the regulators, just considering the implications of how many medications uh, that Catalan has their hands in and how many of Novo Nordisk's direct competitors they work with, including Eli Lilly. So if you haven't caught this on, an, on another you know, video that I've done, because we've talked about this before, Catalan actually manufactures <laughs> Manjaro and Zepbound and even some of the clinical trial medications that we've heard about on earnings calls from Eli Lilly. So this is just going to be a fascinating one to watch if you're one of the GLP-1 nerds. And honestly, if you care about capacity, if you care about accessibility, if you care about these shortages, this is a big deal. This story is a big deal. It's it's not one that gets a lot of you know excitement in the community, but this is one that as a guy who reports on this stuff every single day to you that I do follow very closely and do want to keep you at least uh, uh, you know 
enough in the loop that you know what's going on because this is a big deal, this Catalant and Novo Nordisk potential merger. So we'll stay on top of it at On The Pen. You know I always do. As always, hit that like, hit that bell, hit that sub, go over to the podcast, give it a five-star rating and review. Uh, hopefully we get the chance to do an On The Pen this week. There's a small chance that I will not be able to do it. We've got influenza B in our house and we've got strep in our house and it is just an absolute mess. Uh, I am quite exhausted from it. Um, and so we'll see. I, I was hoping to have our, our guest, Madeline, uh, from Australia, who's in the Reddit True Tide trial on. I'm hoping to still get that done for you all. I'll be working. You know, I work extremely hard to bring this information to you. So thank you for those who support my work uh, with the likes, the gifts, the shares, the memberships, all the things. You are the ones that make this happen. I really appreciate it. Until next time, we will see you on the pen. Thanks for being here, my friends. I appreciate y'all. 